If you had to pick which social media site had the worst type of users on its platform, which one would you pick? I'm talking about users who are constantly negative, angry, and constantly virtue signaling. This platform is Twitter. Yet, it's the most addicting. That irony is why I had to leave. All hail the algorithm, my name is Donna, and yes, I had a Twitter addiction. Now, it's not as dramatic as it sounds, but it did have a significant effect on my personal well-being, which is why I had to leave it. So today, we're going to be talking about why Twitter is addicting and why I chose to leave. I took a poll on my community page, which apparently is controversial these days, and asked you where you got your news. The majority of you said that you got your news anytime it trended on social media. Guess what? This includes me. I think the shift in where people get their information is a partial reason why people feel so exhausted when listening to current events. But let's start with the positive. Okay, I can feel you all judgy McJudgersons, but here's why this benefited me. My social media of choice for news is Twitter. I go into Twitter knowing that people most likely have the wrong info. Because of that, when I see something break on Twitter, I immediately spend hours researching the topic using outside sources. This has caused me to go down so many rabbit holes and I've learned so many things. I've never felt more connected to trends and news going on in the world. In essence, it's forced me to think more critically because at times, what goes viral on Twitter is a video without explanation. It's up to the individual to interpret what they see and do additional outside research to analyze what's going on. It's not influenced by any bias. If you're not new here, you know I could spend hours researching a topic. What's additionally alluring is the countless discussion that goes on about a topic, and you can join in on the convo too, regardless of follower count. Now, other things that make Twitter great, so just a few bonus things, is that it's super funny. The users come up with genius memes that talk about current events and keep it light. Also, it holds companies accountable. I mean, airlines have terrible customer service. And the weird thing is that the only way to make them respond is to make a viral tweet. That is still bad, but at least they respond, right? Unfortunately, the things that make Twitter great are also the cause of its ugliness. Okay, videos shown without bias are great, but they attract conspiracy theories. This video, for instance, went viral at the beginning of quarantine when there was a toilet paper shortage. Without context, it looks pretty bad. It appears as if people are rushing into the grocery store to panic buy. Well, actually, this is a Black Friday sale from 2011. It was reposted on Twitter during this time with the intention of going viral. I also see a lot of marketing stunts. Take this article from BuzzFeed. Catholic high school senior suspended after principal discovers OnlyFans. It goes viral. She posts her link to her OnlyFans and she gains sympathy. Problem is, this article doesn't exist. This never happened. And if it did, BuzzFeed certainly didn't write about it. Lastly, Twitter has bred a generation of headline readers, where the headline is taken as fact. I actually got back on Twitter so I could find examples for this video, and uh, the first thing that pops up is this. The post is a meme that reads, is criticizing billionaires the new blackface? And then it's paired with, what the f**k faces? Well, let's actually read some top responses to this meme. This can't be real. Ah yes, we shall all look back on the bored face with the same disgust we reserve for minstrel shows. How dare anyone believe, even for a moment, the ultra-wealthy would contribute to any meaningful way to a society from which they have entirely divorced themselves. Disgusting bigotry. Ah yes, middle and lower class peanuts criticizing the rich for their scandalous ways of making money. The Washington Post. It smells like racism in here. Does Tom Toll season the boot before he starts licking? So here's the thing, that article is actually criticizing billionaires for victimizing themselves. So that title was entirely clickbait. Now hopefully some people saw that article, but the likes on this thing have me really pessimistic. Now people think there are actual individuals who hate criticizing billionaires and it's equivalent to blackface. No. Not only does Twitter encourage lazy thinking, but it also encourages virtue signaling. Contrasting this using sports as an example, previously we have for thousands of years rewarded the winners, the people who act, 
the ones who run the fastest, swim the fastest, score the most goals, etc, etc. We don't reward the ones who say they run the fastest. <laughs> But thanks to social media, this is someone become backwards. You get rewarded for saying things that make you seem virtuous. As much as I have felt connected on Twitter, I also felt myself consumed by it on my phone all the time when I woke up, while I was eating, after I had written a paragraph, then I go check my phone. It was really bad. And the thing is, when you are constantly bombarded with negativity, your well-being declines. See, on Twitter, everything was designed to evoke some sort of emotional response from me, just so it can go viral. And it truly did, whether I was aware of it or not. This isn't just anecdotal evidence either. A controversial experiment study done on Facebook found that a user's mood can be heavily affected by the moods of the posts they're exposed to. Researchers in this study manipulated the posts users were able to view. One group was shown more positive content, while the other was shown more negative content. Without their awareness, users took on the emotion of the posts they were mostly exposed to. So if they were shown more positive content, their mood would be more positive. If they were shown more negative content, their mood would be more negative. This is called emotional contagion. It often happens in real life when you're with someone face to face. If they're sad, you will most likely be sad too. If they're angry, you will most likely be angry too. The Facebook study showed emotional contagion can be facilitated through social media platforms. No matter how positive you are, you are going to be subconsciously affected by the media you consumed. Maybe if you are positive, your well-being declines just a little bit, so you're still overall positive. But for me, I don't want my well-being declined at all. And 2020 really made that clear to me that I need to be more mindful of the media that I consume because no matter how unwanted it is and no matter how strong you are, you will be affected by what you consume. So sure, it's important to know what's going on in the world around you, and that is something that you should do, but it's less important to know every single person's opinion about it. Through extensive analysis, we find that negative messages are likely to be reposted more rapidly and frequently than positive and neutral messages. Now, this study proves that negative content is not only rampant, but rewarded on Twitter. I think a lot of this is because of how the site is designed. No one cares about the cereal you had this morning. We want to hear about how upset you were at finding out that Filthy Frank was Joji. Compared to any other medium, Twitter also makes negativity convenient. When you're about to yell at someone, you're faced with the repercussions that happen when you behave that way. Is it really worth getting out of the car and starting a fight right now? Because the phone is in your hand. You're in your bedroom and you're mostly anonymous. That illusion of consequence almost vanishes. I bet you can think of a number of influencers who've deleted tweets because of this convenience and anonymity. So the combination of rewards, convenience, and anonymity is the perfect breeding ground for negativity on Twitter. You know, the crazy thing is the crazy thing is that when I leave Twitter, the blah, blah, blah is over party doesn't exist anywhere else. No one is talking about it on TV, on YouTube, any other mainstream source. It just exists on Twitter. So it makes me wonder if these people actually care about what they're trying to cancel or if it's just a small majority of angry people on Twitter and they have no power anywhere else. So it's actually been a month since I've left Twitter and really it sounds over exaggerated, but I couldn't be any more happier. My well-being is good. I find myself using my phone a lot less and I've found other ways of staying connected. My account is still up right now because just in case YouTube like cancels my channel or something, I wanna keep that there to contact them. But overall that's it. And I'm pretty happy with the decision I've made. So what is your experience with Twitter? Do you guys hate it? Do you like it? Um, yeah, that's the end of the video. I will see you guys next time. Stay psyched.